Gibraltar at the UN, a history. The extensive exhibition not only provides context for the creation of the UN off the back of the brutal Second World War, but documents the rock's history with the institution up to modern day. On the 19th of September 1963, then Chief Minister Sir Joshua Hassan and opposition leader Peter Isola first addressed the United Nations. The first time that elected representatives of the people of Gibraltar presented their case before the UN. This is now documented at the exhibition, which Deputy Chief Minister Joseph Garcia said is important not just for the generations who remember it, but also for future generations. Well, it's something I feel very strongly about, and you will have seen the archives have organized a series of exhibitions over the years uh, over significant milestones in our history and in our journey as a people. So we had, for example, an exhibition on the evacuation, we had an exhibition on the referendum, we had one on the closure of the border, there have been others, and this one now, uh, which, which will be open until the 4th of October, is on Gibraltar at the United Nations. So it's important to bring school children here so they learn about our past, so they can understand how that past clicks in to the future, how it fits in to, to, to that process and also this will, this will resonate with the many elderly people who have lived through it, who remember when Sir Joshua went to the United Nations and who were able to hear an audio, the original UN audio tape of Sir Joshua addressing the United Nations in 1963. So it's, it's a fascinating exhibition and I urge people to come and visit it. Joseph Garcia also said future addresses at the United Nations would be a priority. Well, the attendance at the UN is an absolute priority for us. It's a, an, a, the t policy of the government. It has been established as a policy of the parties as well. And it's very clear to us that we would continue attending both the, the first committee, which is, which is known as the Committee of 24, and then that committee reports to the fourth committee, which is the committee of the entire world, um, on, on, on the different territories, and Gibraltar is one of them. So for us, it's, it's absolutely important that this, th this started as an assertion of our right to self-determination, our right to determine our own future, a rejection of the Spanish claim to the sovereignty of our country, and it needs to continue and it needs to be seen through to its logical conclusion, which is the democratic decolonization of Gibraltar through the freely and democratically expressed wishes of its people. Of Roque to come and live with us and thus enjoy all the advantages of our social, economic and political conditions. The exhibition is made up of 210 curated images ranging from photos, documents and press clippings as well as exclusive audio and video footage from 1963. Well, uh, it was about three months hard work, right, where we had to like selectively choose. The major difference of this exhibition compared to the other ones, the other ones we have had to do some data gathering exercises are abroad, but on this occasion uh, I can say that 75%, 80% of the content is actually content which has been housed at the Gibraltar National Archives. So it was just a question of us opening boxes and unveiling some of the stuff, as you might have seen in some of the cabinets. We've got a few air exhibits which are worthwhile the look. And um, eventually we had to sort of trim down and more or less keep everything in context and obviously bearing in mind the general public and obviously the school children. If school children attend, they can have an exhibition where they can be introduced why the significance of the United Nations, why the United Nations was formed and Gibraltar's passage through it and how we have been able to more or less have a voice no, at an, an international stage. The exhibition is open until the 4th of October.